Sri Lanka, known for its coast lined with beautiful, accessible beaches, less known for its jungle, which covers the central uplands. It may look remote, but nowhere in this overcrowded island is far from human habitation. Until recently, kerosene lamps provided the main source of light in far-flung areas. But now an initiative harnessing sun and water is providing power to the people. Medarupa means middle of the jungle. Those who named this village weren't joking. Its scattered houses are in thick undergrowth, four kilometers from the road. This village is a typical target for the team at Safodia Economic Enterprise Development Services, or SEEDS. The van can't go any further. The last stage has to be walked. No electricity, no road, no other facilities, nothing. Luckily, there's a fast-flowing stream with enough of a drop to generate electricity for the whole village using microhydro. Now, during the day when it's hot, we can get a cold drink of water from the fridge or a quick cup of tea by boiling water from the kettle. We had to keep a fire going before and it was a real bother. When a visitor arrives now, we can quickly give them a cup of tea. Other home comforts that many take for granted have also followed. This thing is great entertainment, but also a source of information. The power comes from the turbine direct to each home, just like the national grid. The advantages of microhydro is you develop the village as a community and they all get electricity at one time and it's less costly and once the loan is paid they won't have to pay anything for electricity and they can do a lot of services uh, and actually it's like uh, having grid. Unfortunately, few villages have enough water for hydro making solar a more viable alternative. And in a country where just under half of the population still lack access to the grid, solar systems costing around 200 pounds are in demand. As with hydro, SEEDS provides the credit to cover installation costs. Each month, a rep comes to collect repayments and check the system. While trucks may penetrate the jungle, in the south, motorbikes are the only way to reach remote farms. Here, farmers are adopting solar for all the usual needs, like lighting. But the solar systems have another unique use, stopping the four-footed pests that can wipe out their crops overnight. That is, elephants. A horn wakes this farmer up when an elephant breaches the fence surrounding his crop. This man has rigged up an electric fence to deter hungry elephants. A more conventional use simply means extended working hours for this family as they make cinnamon sticks. It makes a big difference. We have come to the light from the darkness. We can do more work and we can watch TV and looking after our child is easier with good light too. Even in town there's a demand for the seeds finance solar power systems. This barber's shop runs entirely from a solar electrical system, despite having access to the grid. I get two benefits. We have a lot of power cuts, and when that happens, I can still carry on working. Also, it's cheaper. If it's not sunny enough, I can use the grid. But solar is my main system. The grid is backup. This jeweler's shop on the edge of town isn't even grid connected. Its owners prefer to rely on solar power. So even after nightfall, they continue to work with reliable light. We can work until 10 o'clock at night or so. And because of that, it's helped improve the turnover. Also, it means we can turn around orders quicker and during the New Year holidays, we could work, but none of the others could, because during the festival period, there were a lot of power failures. But we had power, and we worked. 